Okay, starting a live video. Mm. And I always procrastinate a little bit in the beginning of my videos <clears throat> till some people get on here live. Let's see, I can fix my hair. <laughs> um, I am going to talk today about putting on and taking off the armor of God. How that happens, how important it is, and how powerful it is. Basically, I go for a walk almost every day. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Jean. Hi, Renee. I go for a walk almost every day. God tells me that it's important for me to go for a walk every day. And while I'm going for my walk, which takes anywhere from half an hour to an hour, depending on which direction I go, and it's all wilderness, um, he tells me to go for that walk and to pray in the Spirit. And I notice when I don't go for my walk, I don't get as much revelation. I don't get... Um, I just don't have freedom, I don't get deliverance in areas, I don't get healing, and I notice that when you pray in tongues, things happen in your life, good things happen in your life. So, what I want to tell you is, when I go for my walk, I meditate on particular scriptures also, and for years and years and years, God has been meditating, having me meditate on the whole armor of God, and I kind of thought I was done with that, I was moving on to communion and the blood of Jesus, but... Um, when I went for my walk yesterday, he brought me back to the whole armor of God. And you know how God says something, uh, and he says something in a moment of time, but then when you try to turn around and share it with somebody, it takes you like paragraphs to, ch to share the same thing. You say it in a paragraph, and he says it like that. Well, that's kind of what happened yesterday with the whole armor of God. As I put on the whole armor of God, usually I say, Father, I put on the whole armor of God. I put on the helmet of salvation. I thank you that salvation means that I'm not only just saved, but that I'm back in sonship. I'm your, I'm your born-again child. I have the same power in me that Jesus walked in. I say things like, um, I receive the healing. Salvation is my thought life. Salvation is, um, I have to think right because salvation is everything. It's healing. It's wholeness, it's deliverance, it's prosperity, it's everything the blood of Jesus paid for us to have to come back into sonship. So I said, I put on the whole armor of God, I put on uh, uh, the breastplate of righteousness. When I got to the breastplate of righteousness, he stopped me. And I don't even know if I can explain to you with the awesomeness that he did of what that means. He said, do you know how you remove the breastplate of righteousness? And I, I said, of course, no. He says, every time you think you're not good enough, every time you think you have to earn something, every mm -hmm. time you think that everything about you is about you, and you start thinking that breastplate of righteousness is, well, I didn't earn it, I'm not righteous, I'm not good enough, I did this, I did that. And he says, you take off your armor every time you come into agreement with what the enemy says about who you are. And he said, in other words, whenever you do, don't realize that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, it's not you become it, you earn it, you do right things and you're righteous. He says, whenever you feel in your mind, in your heart, or you say out loud that, oh, you know, I sinned last night, I'm, you know, I, I'm just as bad as anyone else or whatever. Whenever you say negative things like that, you're taking off the breastplate of righteousness. Because he said, Spocky, Spocky, quiet. Because he said this, the, the breastplate of righteousness is something that you put on, that you take on. It's not your own. You didn't do anything. It doesn't even belong to you. It belongs to God. It belongs to Jesus. And he said, so don't take up, don't take off the breastplate of righteousness. You are righteous. And when you have that breastplate of righteousness on the devil's going to see you you can heal the sick you can raise the dead you can cast out demons you can be delivered you can have answers in the courts of heaven uh, you can walk in the supernatural because you have your breastplate of righteousness on you know that that breastplate is not yours like if i say this is my pen i'm putting my pen on okay that's my pen that pen gives me something okay it's not it's 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 someone else's pen and I'm putting it on my head. But what I'm trying to say is, if this was your pen and you gave it to me and you said, okay, balance it on your head. Whenever you balance it on your head, that means you're a good balancer, okay? So if I take it off my head, I'm not a good balancer. <laughs> I know this is silly. But if I put it on my head, 
because the pen is made to balance or whatever, it makes me it makes it a good balancer. The whole armor, as ridiculous as that sounds, the whole armor of God, when you put on the breastplate, you are putting on what Jesus did. Every piece of this armor is what Jesus did, not what you did. That's why you have to put it on. You have to agree with it. I am the righteousness of God. I am a son of God. I am uh, everything God says I am. I can do everything God says I do. So you take off your righteousness, your breastplate of righteousness, when you agree with people that said you're a sinner and you always will be a sinner. You're not. You're a new creature. You're a son of God. Put on that breastplate. I am righteous. I am good enough. I am righteous because of the blood of Jesus, not because of my actions or lack of actions, not because of even my obedience, not because of I'm a good person, I follow raw law, whatever. It's because you put on Jesus' righteousness. Okay, so don't take that off. And then he started talking to me about the sword of the Spirit. And I never, I get, I get excited when God talks to me. I never thought of this. The sword of the Spirit is the only piece of armor that is a weapon. Okay, then he took me to the scripture that says, Your weapons of your warfare are mighty through God for pulling down strongholds. Um, let me see, that's Ephesians, I think. Let me look that up in my Bible real quick so I can read it to you. Because <clears throat> I got the scripture in my head, but sometimes I reword it. So, um, let me see, uh, where is it? If anyone knows where it is, shout it out there. Um, okay. Oh, that's the weapon. Oh, I always go there. Um, 2 Corinthians 10. Okay, first let me read Ephesians. Um, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Okay, be strong in the Lord means when you put on the breastplate of righteousness, you are agreeing with what the Word of God says. You are righteous, not by your behavior, lack of behavior, goodness, or badness. When you take that armor off by saying, oh, I'm a sinner, and saying I'm not good enough and so on so you're not strong in the Lord you're trying to be strong in yourself okay then it says uh, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but principalities powers darkness rulers of spiritual hosts therefore take up the whole armor of God so that you, you can withstand in the evil day well anytime sickness comes on you that's an evil day anytime people make you feel unworthy that's an evil day Anytime the devil whispers in your ear, you know, you got the symptoms or you got this disease, that's an evil day. So the whole armor of God is a daily thing. It's a mindset. <clears throat> How many are, okay, it says, and having done all to stand, stand there for gir girding your with, with grace with truth. And that goes on and the breastplate of righteousness and shod your people, your feet with the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, which is able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. I'm going to go over all this. But. Okay, so, Second um, Corinthians 10, let me, that's what I want to show you, something that the sword did that I never saw before. Second Corinthians 10. I'm a word person. If you read any of my books, you know I love the word and I love the Holy Spirit. They are my best buddies. Um, okay, let's see, Second Corinthians our weapons of our mind, our, I, the thing I'm looking at, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, oh, 2 Corinthians, not first, that's why it wasn't there, sorry, 2 Corinthians, I don't like no dead space, so I talk fast and try to get it all in there, okay, here it is, our weapons, okay, the whole armor of God, there's one weapon, the rest is armor, the weapon is the sword, now listen to this, okay, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, for we don't walk in the flesh, but we, we and we do not war according to the flesh. For our weapons, okay, they're talking about our weapons now of the armor, okay, our sword. So our sword is mighty in God to pull down strongholds, cast down arguments, high things, and anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, anything illegal. It takes them into captivity, okay. So the sword of God, okay, then God said to me, do you know what the sword of God is? He said that, it's the word of God, but the angels hearken to the voice of the word. So whenever you take up that sword, whenever you speak the word, you are actually commanding your angels. So our confessions, our decrees, our um, uh, word curses is another, write word curses down there. Somebody, I don't want to forget to go over something that the Lord told me about the word and the sword and word curses. Um, so... Basically, God said you don't, you, you, you um, get rid of the sword 
you take off the armor, the sword, when you come into agreement with any report that does not agree with the word of God. He says, think on these things. He gives us parameters. Okay, think on these things. Lo anything that's lovely, pure, praiseworthy, honorable, just, true, and of good report. Meditate. Think on those things. Okay. So the word of God, the sword, is true, pure, honest, just, good report. So whenever you agree with anything that is the opposite of that, you are getting rid of the sword of God. <clears throat> so if the doctor says, hey, you got cancer. And you go, oh my God, I got cancer. And you go around telling everybody, I got cancer, I got this, I got this. You are just throwing down the sword of God. And you're, the word of God is, is void. It's not working for you. And when the word of God is void, the angels are not working for you. Okay, so that means that you have taken off the armor of God. So you put on the armor of God by speaking, using the sword. In the spirit realm, this works in the spirit realm. And everything in the spirit realm creates everything, created everything in the physical realm. Sparky, be quiet. Uh, in Jesus' name, be quiet. Shh, shh. Good baby. Good dog. Okay. So, um, everything spiritual created the physical. In the beginning was the word, and the word was in the beginning, and nothing was made without the word. The word made everything, and God upholds all things by the word of his power. So, the word creates physical things so if you want anything to change in your life you have to find it in the word and then you have to speak it and call it into being and this is what the sword does when you agree with the doctor's report by gossiping or talking about it telling everyone about it whining about it crying about it you are agreeing with the doctor that opens the door for the enemy to come because you came into agreement with the enemy's plan he comes into agreement and he does what he wants to do he he, he makes things worse. So you don't want to come into agreement with the enemy by agreeing with bad reports, things that are not good, right, just, pure, or a good report. Okay? That's what the, that's what the sword is. This, that is the sword of God. And now word curses. I love it. The more you pray in tongues, the more revelation you get. It's so much fun. Um, word curses. Uh, I think it was one, one of my Facebook friends said something about this and it kind of God kind of like when he's when I'm in church and I might not get anything from the pastor but he'll say one word and me and the Holy Spirit are off in a direction and that's kind of what happened with word curses somebody on Facebook said something and God kind of opened up that area to take the report that the doctor gave you that you don't want to agree with and turn it around okay so the doctor says you have cancer okay so what is cancer the, the foundation, what creates cancer, um, sugar, um, inflammation in your body. You look up a little bit about what is cancer. Then you take that word curse. He cursed you, even though he was just telling facts, not truth, facts. Okay, you take that word curse that he spoke against you. Hey, you have cancer. You take that word curse and you do a little research. Excuse me. You find out about it and you, go, you turn that word curse around and make mm -hmm. it into a decree. Father, I thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. That this word curse on cancer, I turn it around in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. There is no inflammation in my body. I don't desire sugar. I hate sugar. I know it feeds cancer. So therefore, Father, I have no desire to have sugar in my diet. Sugar has no place in my body. Thank you, Father, that you're giving me information on what natural things I can do to heal my body. Th and so on. You turn around a word curse. You use the sword of God. You turn around a word curse. And you use it in the spirit realm to create the physical realm. That's why faith. Okay, let's go on to faith. Above all, take the shield of faith. And another scripture goes on to say that in the Hebrews 11, where the faith chapter goes on to say that, and these people received their promises and so on by faith because they had a good report. So in other words, what you speak, you are proclaiming. You are using the sword of the Spirit. And when you agree with what the enemy says, anything that's not lovely, pure, trust, uh, honorable, true, true according to the word of God, you're agreeing with the enemy. It opens the door to the enemy. So you got to take that around, change that word curse, and make it become a... a healthy thing a, a, a decoration and I got sidetracked what I was just saying oh my word I hate when I do this I get so excited um, 
what was I saying? Anybody know where, which direction I was headed in? Please say something. <laughs> um, okay, I was talking about word curses. Um, oh, faith. I want to go on to faith. Um, okay, so faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is believing. Faith is, no, this is it. Faith is seeing in the spirit realm the answer you want in the physical realm. I got to write that down. Remember, I got to write that down. Um, because that, that's what God just said to me right now. That's what it is. That's good. <laughs> I'm sorry. He gives me revelation. Okay, so so faith is seeing in the spirit realm what you want to manifest in the physical realm. Oh, that's good. I love that. <laughs> I hope that gets you excited as it does me. Okay, so above all, take the shield of faith. Because if you look in the, uh, Hebrews 11, it says that those who uh, believed... Okay, those... Uh, who believe that God was God and God is a rewarder that God is and God is a rewarder of faith and that faith pleased God faith pleased God so basically I just see that that faith that believing and seeing in the spirit realm what you want to manifest in the physical realm is faith okay so use your imagination see it put pictures up on the wall uh, put 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 things that you can see uh, pictures of you healed pictures of whatever you know so that is faith that's why you have to lift that above everything else okay so faith is is taking what you want to see seeing it in the spirit realm manifest in the physical realm okay then the the what he talked to me about the shoes of peace i always said god why do you call it the preparation of the shoes of the gospel of peace and i still don't have a total answer of what i feel the revelation of it is the obvious thing is and kind of what he showed me a little bit, but it's got to be deeper than that, is feet represent authority. We stand on the devil's head. Um, we are the body of Christ, and Satan is to crawl on the, on the earth. Uh, we have all authority and dominion over him. Wherever we go, we bring the gospel. So that is, is what he showed me a little bit about our feet of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace is nothing broken, nothing missing. That means that we are the container that carries the presence of God wherever we go. And we're not just supposed to carry it wherever we go. We're supposed to release it wherever we go. So in other words, we bring peace. If, if I'm walking the street and I see some drunk guy laying on the side with his head bleeding, uh, I talk to him, I minister to him, I could lay hands on him, I could pray for him, and so on. So you always want to um, take the power that you have within you and release it wherever wherever you want to go so anyway so i just want to share those few things about word curses how you use the weapon uh it's and how powerful it is and how the ministering spirits work for you with you uh, when you speak the word when you use the sword to change situations and circumstances and to hurt the enemy uh, so that's it for today so share this video if you liked it if you got anything out of it if you want to leave a comment that you want me to acknowledge or um, you want me to answer uh, make sure you say Robin Bremer because then I'll say so-and-so mentioned you and uh, you know I'll be able to go back and, and look at that but sometimes this videos are, my videos get so spread out that I, I can't even find people that are looking at them so and, and here is my advertisement I am a publishing coach I will publish your Christian book my niche is Christians who walk in the supernatural of God um, I will publish your book for $3.99. I take your book. I will format it. Um, create your cover. If you don't have a professional-made cover, I will create a cover for you. I will format it for Kindle and for print and upload all the uh, information that you need. I'll, I'll open up all your accounts. Uh, I do everything with your book except for copy editing. If you ever follow any of my posts, you know I'm a terrible speller. I do not do punctuation and grammar very well. So I hire out to do that, and if you want that included, that's in one of my other packages. Anyway, so check out my website, robinbremer.net, R-O-B-I-N-B-R-E-M-E-R.net, and it's time for me to go skating, ice hockey, uh, go practicing. So I am going to shut this off, and I will talk to you all later. I love you. I love coming to you live. It's so much fun. Talk to you later. Bye.